Okay, thank you, Mayor Bowser. Uh, I am Pete Newsham. I'm the Chief of Police for the Metropolitan Police Department. Uh, I was very pleased uh, with the First Amendment assemblies uh, that we had in the District of Columbia last night. Uh, they were largely peaceful uh, in and around the White House. Uh, we did have a go-go truck that ap appeared on K Street for a period of time. Again, the folks uh, that assembled around the go-go go were peaceful. Uh, around 11.30, between 11.30 and midnight, we had a group uh, of about uh, close to 200 uh, that marched throughout the city. Uh, they were largely peaceful uh, in their march. Uh, at the end, uh, we had um, four arrests uh, at around five o'clock uh, in the vicinity of where the uh, go-go truck was. We had one arrest uh, for crossing a police line. Uh, at about 9.50 p.m., uh, we had two arrests just outside of Lafayette Square. Uh, we had an assault with a dangerous weapon, a bat, uh, and an interfering with the police. That was all one incident where there was two arrests. Uh, and about 2.30 a.m., uh, we had an incident up at the 4th District Police Station uh, where there was one arrest uh, for crossing a police line. Uh, the Metropolitan Police Department did not have to uh, deploy any munitions. Uh, we did not have to put on any riot gear. Uh, we have a proud history in the District of Columbia of facilitating First Amendment assemblies. We've had over a thousand uh, so far this year. Uh, and last night was an example uh, of a very peaceful demonstration uh, that I, like I said, I'm very pleased about. Uh, I can talk a little bit about an incident that's had some attention uh, at around 2.25 a.m. at 14th and New York Avenue Northwest. Uh, we had an assault with a dangerous weapon, a sharp object. Uh, we had three victims in that case, two adult males and an adult female. Uh, they all suffered non-life-threatening uh, injuries. Uh, they were taken to a local hospital. Uh, and we could take uh, any questions that you all have. Sam. So, Chief, what about this? What can you, else can you tell us? It's been said that they were a proud boy. Exactly. Uh, we don't know the affiliations of the suspects or the victims in this case. So uh, that will be part of the invest investigation because I think, as you know, uh, if you assault someone because of their political affiliation, that would be a hate crime. Okay. So you're investigating it on that basis? Of a, of a we don't crime. know. We don't have a motive at this point. It's much too early in the investigation. So, Chief, could I just follow up on that? So, do you have any suspects or do you have photos or anything you're releasing as far as There that? is video, so we're trying to put together a flyer right now with the best, the clearest images of some folks that were involved. Uh, so as soon as we get have that, we'll get that out. And so the video, you clearly hear the victims calling the suspects Black Lives Matter. That's how they're referring to them in their video and their subsequent videos from the hospital. Uh, at some point last night, someone from your department told our news desk that, that in fact these were members of Proud Boy who, were, who said they were attacked by Black Lives Matter. So somebody told your... Yeah, I, I, the only thing I will say about that, you know, at 2.30 in the morning uh, when our officers are trying to gather information on the scene, that information is preliminary in nature. Uh, and oftentimes, uh, unfortunately, it changes. Uh, so all I can say is after more extensive investigation, uh, with the victims of the crime, we, we don't know uh, who they were affiliated with. And my last on this, are the victims cooperating with you? Have you interviewed yeah. them? And Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were able to interview the victims at the hospital. They've been very cooperative. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Chief, just real one, one quick question. Sorry about it. Keep coming back and forth. That's okay. Uh, I didn't go that far. <laughs> a lot of the organizers, they're saying that last night was literally day one of a week-long set of demonstrations. Uh, we saw last night tensions got a little high. There's a possibility that tensions can reach that level if not exceed it in the next few days. Uh, what's, what's the department, what, what is the city doing to make sure that they quell any potential uh, you know, acts of violence or what have you moving forward? Well, you know, I was around uh, a lot of the activity last night and I uh, didn't feel like tensions were high. Uh, we had a couple of minor incidents that we were able to take care of uh, relatively quickly. Um, so our message is going to continue to be what it what it always is. You know, if you want to come out and you want to exercise your First Amendment right, Washington, D.C. is the place to be. We welcome you. Uh, if you want to come out here and you want to break the law, unfortunately, we have a responsibility uh, to ensure that doesn't happen and, and we will take you into custody.
So can we ask about plans for tonight or parking restrictions, road closures? Sure, the parking restrictions will be the same as when we began uh, yesterday. So that's primarily uh, north of H Street uh, up to about K Street from 15th to 17th Street. That's for parking restrictions. Uh, we don't have any intentions to close that area down, but we will uh, if crowds form down there. And the reason we do that is for the safety of the demonstrators. We don't want vehicles traveling uh, where people may be uh, having protests. And are you still all hands on deck? Is it still? We are. So our plan going into the election was to ensure that we had uh, enough personnel to be able to handle any demonstrations that did occur. Uh, and so for the foreseeable future, uh, the entire police department will be working.